Hey guys, welcome into this segment from our full length The Onside Kick podcast. In order to get the full podcast, go down to the description, go to blog talk radio backslash The Onside Kick to download the full thing. Enjoy, everybody. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the Mark Weber. Dub them East. And welcome into another edition of the Onside Kick here on Most Valuable Podcast. If you're on YouTube, hello. It is wonderful to see your lovely faces today. And if you're, you're on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, or Stitcher, thank you guys for giving us the download and listen today. And Mark, we got a jam-packed show. We're going to be talking about, it's a topic we looked at a little bit eight months ago that we're revisiting because of comments made by Sean McDermott and the new Bills GM of Brandon Bean about Tyrod Taylor. Is he going to be the future at quarterback for the Bills? We'll dive into that. We're also going to have Jeremy Brenner on from BattleRedBlog.com, the Texan SB Nation blog to talk about should Deshaun Watson be the numero uno starter for the Texans this season. Then we're going to end everything with uh, a great topic. Sean probably wishes that he was here because we're talking Tom Brady. Oh, he's excited. It's going to be comparing Tom Brady with a little bit of Michael Jordan, so stick around. That is going to be a great topic to end the podcast. But, Mark, I want to get started with this Tyrod Taylor talk because we looked at, like I said, eight months ago, We had a segment where we looked at, is he basically the guy? Is he the guy at quarterback Mm -hmm. for this Bills team, the franchise quarterback? Well, there were comments made where, according to Roto World, using the source of the Monday morning quarterback, it says Coach uh, Sean McDermott initially said Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback of the future, but he immediately amended after new GM Bean's comments saying it remains to be seen. So I'm going to ask you, Mark, in your opinion, is Tyrod Taylor the future quarterback for the Buffalo Bills? Hmm. This is a a difficult thing to answer, and part of it's a little semantics. Um, I think he probably should be the quarterback Mm -hmm. of the future. I mean, he's shown to be a successful quarterback. Uh, I don't necessarily think he will be because the Bills have kind of royally fucked this whole thing up. Uh, and I think there's a lot, you know, some of that bad blood might be gone because of some shifts and changes going on with the Bills organization. But at the same time, he's not going to forget the mm-hmm. fact that they were so non-committed to him. And then to go and say, quarterback of the future, eh, wait, hold on, maybe not. It's just reminding Tyrod Taylor, these guys don't love me. They don't care. Somebody else will give me that love, um, that respect that I deserve. So the good thing about Tyrod Taylor is... He's going to go out there. He's going to perform no matter what. He's going to give you these good numbers. The bad thing about this is I don't think he's going to want to be there anymore because, I mean, just time after time after time, they keep throwing it back in his face of we don't 100% believe in you, and I think that's wrong. I think he deserves it. I think he's earned his respect for this team. He's not top five quarterback material, Mm -hmm. but he's better than what, uh, you know, Better than what a lot of other teams have right now. Well, and the thing for me is the exact, it's kind of the same situation that you were looking at is it's really going to depend on this season. And when I say depend on this season, it is going to depend on the wins and the losses for the Buffalo Bills this season. Thank you, John Man. Well, when I look at Tyrod Taylor's first, I want to look at his contract. Technically, he's an unrestricted free agent in twenty um, after the 2021 year. So 2022, mm-hmm. he'll be a free agent. However, there are two possible outs that the Bills have, the first of which comes after this season. There's a potential out. They could, after this 2017 season, say, bye-bye, sayonara, see you later. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Tyrod's side saying, exercise that. Yeah. And if they keep them, they can keep them for 2018, then 2019, 2020, and 2021 club options. So really, it's one of those things where after each season, you basically have 
a possible one year contract from now yeah. until the, the biggest non commit. Yeah, the biggest non commit contract mm-hmm. there could potentially be. And the reason why I say that it depends on this season is I'm going to reference my way too early mock draft because it's going to come out sooner rather than later. And I'm going to kind of pull the wool and let you guys know and kind of spoil some things. Right now, the order that is being used, I use the same one as Todd McShay. Football Outsiders had their records. They got the Bills with the eighth overall pick. And with me, this is going to be the year where quarterbacks are going to go. I, Sam Darnold and Josh Allen will probably be at the top at 1-2. Depending on how Josh Rosen plays, that could add a third quarterback to the mix. You have Lamar Jackson. Those four quarterbacks, to me, could all be taken in the top five. And I actually have them all going in the top five. I have four quarterbacks in the first five picks of the way too early yeah. mock draft. And if the Bills, let's say, fall in that top five, let's say even they're at a one, they're at a two, maybe they're at a four, they're going to get an opportunity if they're in that top five to get one of those quarterbacks. So that, to me, is where this plays in, to where if they have the opportunity to get a Darnold, get an Allen, get a Rosen, get a Jackson. Of course, we got, like, in the one thing that we've been getting a lot of comments on the Primetime Podcast when we talked about the 2018 NFL draft this past week with Rosen and Allen, everyone's like, oh, well, they got to play this next season. I get that. You got to play this next season. The Bills have to play the season because we don't know if they're going to be a low draft pick or a high draft pick. But if they're a higher draft pick in that top five, looking at the quarterbacks right now, I would look at that and go, "Bye bye Tyrod. I am going to draft a guy mm-hmm. that I actually like and want to commit to. Well, here's the thing that amazes me about this. I mean, it shows such a lack of foresight here mm-hmm. to say, I'm not willing to commit. Uh, I mean, to the the words being used is that, uh, that Bean is far from sold. And they're going to keep turning over every stone until they're 100% set. And to me, this is like, you just don't have to say it. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that amazes Keep me so much. Keep it behind closed doors. Yes, you can just not talk shit, basically, is what it comes <laughs> down to. Because that's all they're doing. They're talking shit about their own quarterback. Mm-hmm. And to say that it's a battle is one thing. You can go out there and say, hey, it's a battle. Go win your job. It's another thing to say that, you know, if Tyrod wins the job or somebody else, what the they, hell does they that... They do have why? Cardell Jones and they have... They drafted Nate Peterman this year. Yeah, in what, fifth, sixth mm-hmm. round? Fifth round. Fifth round. So, like, you just don't need to say it. If it, if somebody else goes out there and they win in the preseason, awesome. No one's mm-hmm. going to have any issue with that. If you're the number one, two, three, four overall pick next year and you're going to go out there and draft quarterback X, whoever's the number one quarterback, uh, take your pick for your favorite, all you college football fans, if you go do that, no one's going to blame you. So why do you have to come out here, shoot your quarterback's confidence, uh, assure him that one fuck up and he's gone? A guy who's only thrown, what, 12 interceptions in the last two years? That's 30 games that he's, I th- I believe it's 30 games that he's started now in these last two years. Uh, 12 interceptions in that. That's a pretty, you're pretty happy about that. Uh, you know, 20 touchdowns in the first in that first year and 15, 16, 17, something like that. And the second year obviously took a step back, but still pretty good. Yeah, 12, 12 interceptions in his two years with the Bills. I just don't get it. We're not sitting here looking at Aaron Rodgers right now, but we're looking at a quarterback who can win you games. And if you build the team around him like they're kind of doing, getting a good rushing game, well, one of the best rushing attacks last mm-hmm. year, uh, having a— With Shady. Yeah, we're having a solid defense and hopefully, you know, continuing to build up on that defense. I mean, we saw their first pick, of course, with White in the first round. I like that pick. I love it, too, especially getting him later in the first round here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of those things where you look at it and you're like, build the team around Tyrod and he can take you places because he won't make mistakes. And that's why, to me, it's either one of two situations that are going to be virtually the answer to the question is no. Tyrod Taylor is not the future. And it has nothing to do with Tyrod Taylor. They don't want him. It's not something where I'm saying Tyrod Taylor's a bum, get him out of town. I'm just saying I don't think that, and really the thing that I look at is, you say Bean isn't sold yet, and really if he's not sold, you look at McDermott. McDermott looks like he's sold. Yeah. The coach goes out and says, yeah, he's the future 
Oh, oh, wait, I'm not supposed to say that? Oh, no. It's not it's party not, line, it's not, yeah. It's not part, it's, I look at it and mm. I go, either one of two things is going to happen to, with Tyrod in this situation. Number one, the Bills are in a prime position to get one of the top quarterbacks, and they do it. And I'll say, I'll, I'll leave Lamar Jackson out because th- he's the quarterback that I have him third on my board right now of quarterbacks just because I like him. I have that little bias. I think he's going to be a phenomenal talent. But I'll leave him out because he's not a consensus kind of quarterback that teams would look for. But you look at Darnold, you look at Allen, and you look at what Rosen can be, those three could be guys that teams go, that's my franchise. Mm -hmm. That is the franchise that I want to go with. And if the Bills have a chance at one of them, that's situation number one. But by potential out right now, we're going to draft a quarterback or if they don't, let's say they're winning games and they they just miss from those quarterbacks, it could be a situation where they go, hey, you know what? Cardell Jones is a backup. We all know it. Let's see Nate Peterman. Let's see what he does in his second year. And then once he's ready to take over the job, boom, bye bye Tyrod. We cut him at the end of the year and Peterman takes yeah. over. It just it, To me, it's just that Tyrod Taylor is not a sexy uh, well, like a sexy player. Mm-hmm. He's not a sexy pick. You know, he's not yeah. a sexy option here. Uh, he's been in the league for seven years now. Mm-hmm. He was a sixth round pick by uh, the Ravens. It's just nothing to be excited about. He just kind of came in here and was successful. That's really what it came down to. He went in, he won a job, and he's been successful. And he's been mistake free for the most part. He's been good, but not amazing. And the the Buffalo Bills, they want the sexy pick, and that's fine. You can want that. What I'm saying is going to next year's draft as saying, hey, we're going to draft the best player available. If mm-hmm. it happens to be a quarterback, it happens to be a quarterback. That's okay. No one blames you. No one's mad at you for that. Um, to me, it's just kind of silly way to come in here right now and just immediately be like, yeah, no, not sold. You're just kind of shaking the quarterback's confidence, and it's well, something and that's, that's important. If I'm Tyrod, I, I got to I got to look at it and go, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm coming into play. I am going to prove you wrong and show you that I am the future of this franchise. Because when you look at the team, you mentioned the rushing attack is solid. With um, You've got LaShawn McCoy, Shady, back there. And we have like Sammy Watkins. They're not going to pick up his option, I believe, um, at the end of this season. Mainly because he's been injured. Hasn't been on the field a whole lot, but if he can be on the field, they get a guy like Zay Jones to right now I think he's the number two to Sammy Watkins. And really that's what I look at. You get a weapon for him, the offensive line, if they can protect him, get some kind of time for him, he can shine this year. And for Bills fans, I think it's a little catch twenty two of yeah, you want the team to do well, but it's one of those things where do you want to be in kind of pick limbo where ah we're too, we're too far back to get a top quarterback, but I don't want to suck this season because I actually want to watch games and be entertained. Yeah, yeah. And you never want your team, as much as we all plus like to not, joke about plus it. Plus you're not winning the division because Tom yeah. Brady's there. Yeah, as much as we all like to joke about it, you don't want your team to, to do poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, Tyrod Taylor, uh, he falls into this trap of, you know he probably he's probably done enough to to earn himself quarterback of the future potential, but you know twenty seven year old quarterback uh, throws for about three thousand yards every season here, and he's not the exciting face of your franchise here, and that's mm-hmm. the kind of trap he falls into himself. Uh, that'll you know he's got to give Kirk Cousins a phone call, and they just got to talk every Sunday night, maybe uh, Monday mornings, and just console each other of. Our teams don't you know, want us. Her cousins they is got, all, they also just, a guy. Uh, we're just here. We're waiting until next year, you know. Uh, so to me, I don't know. I don't know mm-hmm. what to say about, about Tyrod Taylor because he's got to win over the GM. The, he's got to win over the new GM. He, he won't. It's, I know he won't, but he's – The, the Buffalo Bills, they just don't really want – they just don't really want what he's selling. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know why he's selling a great product for him, and they don't want it. Like I said, either one of two things is going to happen. They're going to be high enough to draft a prime quarterback this year, uh-huh. and they're going to go ahead and do it and kick him off to the side, yeah. or he'll be on the team, we'll take it, we'll take it, and then once Peterman is ready, if mm-hmm. Peterman's ever ready, 
then it'll be, okay, you're gone. Peterman yeah. takes over the job. Fortunately for Tyrod, he doesn't make mistakes that mm-hmm. often uh, because I could totally see the Buffalo Bills being a team to say, ooh, you threw two interceptions in the game. You're out of here, bud. And just pull the string you know, as soon as possible uh, just because it's almost as if they want him to fail. A little bit. A little bit. And the thing that I will say that it's good that he has this on his side is he's got the coach on his side. He does. Ha- mm-hmm. it, it seems like to me he does have McDermott on his side. Yep. So that may help him a little bit this season. But his boss, the GM, his boss, yeah. you know, he might want to do what the boss wants him to do mm-hmm. because turnover is pretty fast in Buffalo. That is true. I that is this was McDermott's first year. We know how quick that turnover was after they got rid of um, Rex Ryan. But let's turn on to the fans. You guys, let us know down below. What do you guys think? Is Tyrod Taylor the future in Buffalo? Will he get a chance? Will the Bills be high enough this year to get a quarterback and that will force Tyrod Taylor out of town? Let us know down below in the comment section. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that segment from the onside kick. If you think the fun stops there, you're wrong because click the video right over here. What are you thinking? Come on. Click it. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. Bye, everybody.